Dozy, I am with child, she said, her voice quivering with a mix of fear and hope. Dozy's face turned pale, the smile vanishing in an instant. See, I know I am not responsible for this pregnancy. He instantly denied the pregnancy, his voice sharp and cold. He turned away, unable to look at her. Amara sank onto the ground, her sobs echoing through the empty fields. The dreams she had nurtured, the future she had envisioned with Doze, crumbled around her. In the quiet village of Omwaka, there lived a young couple named Doze and Amara. Their love story was the talk of the village, whispered about by the old women and admired by the young men. They had been in love since childhood, their bond growing stronger with each passing year. Doze, a tall and strong man, was the pride of his family. His broad shoulders and warm smile made him the most sought-after young man in Umwaka. He was known for his hard work in the fields and his dedication to his family. Many young women in the village dreamt of catching his eyes, but Doze's heart belonged only to Amara. Amara, with her radiant beauty and kind-hearted nature, was adored by everyone. Her laughter was like music, and her presence brought joy to everyone around her. She was often seen helping her mother at the market or caring for her younger siblings. Despite her responsibilities, she found time to be with Doze, the man she loved. One moonlight evening, Dozi and Amara met under the old mango tree, where they often spent time together. The tree stood tall and majestic, its branches heavy with ripe fruits. Dozi had Amara close, his arms wrapped around her protectively. I will always love you, Amara, he whispered, his voice filled with sincerity and passion. Amara smiled, her heart full with hope and dreams of a future together with Dozi. And I will always love you too, Dozi, she replied, her voice soft and tender. They sat in comfortable silence, the sounds of the night surrounding them, the distant chirping of crickets and gentle rustle of leaves and the breeze, and the occasional hoot of an owl created a symphony that seemed to celebrate their love. Dozi looked into Amara's eyes, his heart swelling with emotion. He knew that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her to build a family and create a home filled with love and happiness. One day, Amara, who will have a beautiful home and be children running around, he said, his eyes shining with excitement. Amara's eyes sparkled with tears of joy. Yes, Doze, I believe that too, and I want that. Our love will carry us through any challenge, she said, her voice filled with conviction. But fate had other plans. A few months later, Amara noticed changes in her body. Her morning sickness, fatigue, and the slight swell in her belly could not be ignored. One afternoon, while helping her mother in the kitchen, she felt a wave of dizziness wash over her. Clutching the counter for support, she realized what was happening. With a mixture of fear and excitement, she hurried to the village midwife who confirmed her suspicions. Amara, you are with child, the midwife said gently, a warm smile on her face. Amara's heart pounded with a mix of emotions. She was carrying Dozi's child, a symbol of their love. She couldn't wait to tell him the news. She imagined his joy, his strong arms wrapping around her in a protective embrace. The vision gave her strength as she made her way to the fields where Doze was working. She found Doze taking a break under the shade of a tree, wiping sweat from his brow. His friends were nearby, laughing and chatting. Amara's step were hurried, her excitement barely contained. Doze, I need to speak with you, she said, her voice filled with urgency. Doze looked up, a smile playing on his lips. Amara, my love, what is it? he asked standing up and leading her a little away from his friends for privacy. Amara took a deep breath, her hands trembling. 
Dozy, I am with child, she said, her voice quivering with a mix of fear and hope. Dozy's face turned pale, the smile vanishing in an instant. What? How can this be? He stammered, his mind racing. He thought about his future, the plans he had made. His uncle, Chief Ike, had promised to take him abroad, to America. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Any distraction whatsoever could jeopardize it for good. I cannot have these distractions now. See, I know I am not responsible for this pregnancy. He instantly denied the pregnancy. His voice sharp and cold. He turned away, unable to look at her. Amara's heart shattered at his words. Please, Doze, don't leave me. You are the father of the child I am carrying. She pleaded, tears streaming down her face. This is our child, a part of both of us. But Dozier's mind was made up. The fear of losing his opportunity overshadowed his love for Amara. I can't, Amara. I just can't, he said. His back still turned to her. Amara's tears fell freely as she realized the gravity of his words. She reached out to touch his shoulders, but he stepped away. Desperation filled her voice as she tried one last time. Dozie, please. Dozie, please, I beg you with everything you hold dear. Think about our child. Dozie clenched his fist, fighting the urge to turn around. He knew that if he looked at her, he might fault her. But the thought of his future, the promises of a better life, held him back. Without another word, he walked away, leaving Amara standing there, broken and alone. As he disappeared into the distance, Amara sank onto the ground, her sobs echoing through the empty fields. The dreams she had nurtured, the future she had envisioned with Dozier, crumbled around her. She was left alone with painful reality that she would have to face those challenges on her own. Dozier's uncle, Chief Ike, was a wealthy and influential man in Umwaka. His large, impressive compound was a symbol of success and power. Chief Ike had worked hard to attain his wealth. He had wanted the same for his nephew. He saw potential in Doze and had big plans for him. The opportunity to go to America was a golden ticket to a prosperous future, one that could not be jeopardized by any distraction, especially not an unplanned pregnancy. When Chief Ike heard about Amaka's pregnancy, his face darkened with anger. Doze, what is this nonsense I am hearing about you? He demanded, his voice booming through the spacious living room. Dozier, sitting nervously on the edge of a chair, looked down, unable to meet his uncle's furious gaze. Uncle, it was a mistake, he muttered, his voice barely audible. A mistake? You will not ruin your future over this girl. Chief Ike thundered. Do you know how many years I have worked to build this opportunity for you? How many sacrifices I have made? You will go to America and you will make something out for yourself. This village has nothing, absolutely nothing to offer you. Doze's heart was heavy with guilt and confusion. He loved Amara deeply, but the weight of his uncle's words and the promise of a brighter future pulled him into the opposite direction. He had always looked up to Chief Ike, the man who had been more of a father to him than his own. Disappointing him felt like a betrayal of everything he had ever been taught. Uncle Amara, Doze started, but Chief Ike caught him off with a dismissive wave of his hand. No boss, Doze, you must think of your future. This is your chance to rise above the limitations of this village. You cannot let this girl and her unborn child hold you back. If you want to succeed, you must be willing to make tough choices. Tough choices include taking risks. Chief Ike stated, his tone leaving no room for argument. Dozi was torn between his love for Amara and his ambition. The thought of leaving her behind, pregnant and alone, tore at his heart. But the vision of a life abroad, the opportunities and the prosperity it promised, loomed large on his mind. He felt trapped, like a bird caught in a snare with no easy way out. That night, as Doze lay in bed, he replayed his uncle's words over and over in his mind. He knew what he had to do, 
but he didn't make the decision any easier for him. He could still hear Amara's pleas, see the tears in her eyes, but he steeled himself against the emotions threatening to overwhelm him. At the dawn, Bezier packed his bags. He avoided the usual route where he might run into Amara. He couldn't bear to face her, to see the pain and betrayal in her eyes. Without a word, he slipped away from the village, leaving behind the only life he had ever known and the woman he had loved since childhood. Amara, waking up the next morning, felt a chill run through her. She had hoped that Dozier would change his mind, that he would choose their love over his ambitions. But as the hours passed, there was no sign of him. The harsh reality set in. Dozier was nowhere to be found in the village. Heartbroken and alone, Amara sat by her window, staring at the path that Dozier had taken. Her tears flowed freely, each one a testament to the shattered dreams and the love that had been abandoned. She knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but she vowed to be strong for the sake of her unborn child. Months passed and Amara's belly grew heavily with the weight of her unborn child. The once nimble and active young woman now moved with a deliberate pace, her steps slower, her breath deeper. She continued to work hard on the fields, her hand ruffled by the soil and her back aching from the long hours. The villagers watched her with a mixture of pity and admiration. Despite her circumstances, Amara remained determined, her spirit unbroken. She rose before the dawn every day. Her solemn belly made even the simplest tasks a challenge. She fetched water from the stream, tended to the crops and gathered firewood. The village women often whispered among themselves, marveling at her strength and resilience. Amara is a warrior. She is strong, they would say, and she will make it through. One stormy night, as the wind hollowed and the rain battered on the rooftops, Amara felt a sharp pain in her lower back. She winced, clutching her belly, knowing that the time had come. She was alone in her small house, the flickering flame of the kerosene lamp casting shadows on the wall. The pain intensified and she knew she couldn't do this alone. Summoning all her strength, she made her way to her neighbor's house. Each step a struggle. Mama Nkechi, Mama Nkechi, she called out, her voice strained with pain and urgency. Mama Nkechi, a kind and experienced woman, rushed out of her house, her face full of concern. Amara, is it time? She asked, seeing the agony on Amara's face. Yes, so my baby is coming. Amara managed to say between gaps. Mama Nkechi quickly gathered a few other women from the village, and together they helped Amara back into her house. They laid her on a mat, surrounding her with warm blankets and lighting more lamps to brighten the room. The storm outside raged on, but inside there was a sense of calm and purpose. The labor was long, very arduous. Amara greeted her teeth, her hands gripping the edge of the mat. The village women encouraged her, her voice steady and soothing. You are strong, Amara, you can do this. Hours passed and finally, with a final agonizing push, the first baby emerged. It's a boy, Mama Nkichi exclaimed holding up the newborn. The women quickly cleaned and wrapped him in a soft cloth, but there was no time to rest. Another baby was on its way. Amara, exhausted but determined, summoned the last of her strength, and moments later, the second baby was born. Another boy, one of the women cried out, a smile spreading across her face. Amara lay back. She was surprised that she was having twins. She never even thought about it for a moment. Her body spent, but her heart filled with overwhelming love and relief. The women placed her twin boys in her arms, their tiny faces peeking out from the blanket. Chidi and Chiki, she whispered, naming them on the spot. She looked into their innocent eyes, feeling an unbreakable bond with her sons. Despite the hardships, Amara loved her sons dearly. She marveled at their tiny fingers and toes, their soft cries, and the way they instinctively sought her warmth. In that moment, she vowed to raise them with strength and dignity, 
even if she had to do it alone. She would be their mother and father and protector and provider. The storm raged on outside. Amara felt a fierce determination rise within her. She would face whatever challenges that came her way for the sake of her beloved boys, Chike and Chidi. A few years went by and Amara struggled to make ends meet. Each day was a test of endurance and willpower. She rose before the sun, her body accustomed to the early hours and the laborious tasks that awaited her. She took on any work she could find, from tilling the fields and adversing crops to washing clothes for other families. There was no job too small or too hard for Amara. Her sons depended wholly on her and she was determined to provide for them. Chidi and Chike grew up knowing only the love and sacrifice of their mother. From a very young age, they learned the value of hard work and perseverance. They would accompany Amara to the farms, helping her in whatever they could. Though their hands were small, their efforts were earnest. Amara often looked at them with pride, her heart swelling with love. Remember my sons, she would say, we may not have much, but we have each other, and that is enough. The boys, identical in appearances, but different in temperament, became the light of Amara's life. Chidi, the elder by few minutes, was serious and studious. He excelled in school, always eager to learn and make his mother proud. Chike, on the other hand, was more carefree and adventurous. He loved exploring the village and its surroundings. His laughter, a constant reminder of the joy he brought into their lives. Despite their differences, the twins shared a deep bond, understanding the sacrifices their mother made for them. They would often forego their own desires to lighten her burden, helping with chores and looking out for each other. The villagers often gossiped about Amara's misfortune. They whispered about how Doze had abandoned her, leaving her to raise the boys alone. They pitied her, but some also judged her. Oh, poor Amara, they would say, what a shame, raising two boys all by herself, no man to help her. The words were sharp, but Amara refused to let them break her spirit. Amara held her head high. Her pride evident in the way she carried herself. She ignored the whispers and focused on her sons, pouring all her love and energy into giving them a better life. She made sure they were well fed, clothed and educated, often sacrificing her own needs to ensure their needs were met. The family lived in a small modest house at the edge of the village. It was simple but clean, filled with the warmth and love that Amara cultivated. Amara made sure that their home was humble and a place of comfort and security for herself and her children. A few years went by again and the boys grew into strong teenagers. Chidi excelled in his studies, always eager to learn more and make his mother proud. Chike with his adventurous spirit often found ways to earn a little extra money, helping neighbors with odd jobs and errands. Together, they lightened their mother's burden, their bond growing stronger with each passing day. One day, news spread through the village like wildfire. Dozier had returned from America. The air buzzed with excitement and curiosity as villagers exchanged snippets of information. Did you hear? Dozier that went some years ago is finally back and he is a very rich man now. They say he drives a car that shines like silver. I saw him, dressed in fine clothes, looking like a city gentleman. The whispers grew louder, the anticipation palpable. Dozier's arrival was nothing short of a spectacle. He drove into the village in a sleek black car that gleamed in the sunlight. His clothes were sharp and expensive. His demeanor confident and sophisticated. Children ran after his car. Their eyes wide with wonder. While adults watched from their doorways, their expression a mix of admiration and envy. Dozier had become the epitome of success, a symbol of what living the village could achieve. When Amara saw him for the first time after all these years, 
Her heart aches with a mix of anger and longing. Memories of their past flooded her mind. Those moonlight nights under the mango tree, their whispered promises of future together, and the crushing moment when he turned his back on her. She had built her life without him, had raised their sons with strength and dignity, but see him now so changed and yet so familiar stirred the storm of emotions within her. She wanted to confront him, to demand why he had abandoned her and their children. She wanted to unleash the years of pain and struggle she had endured to make him understand the depth of her suffering. But as she stood there, watching him from a distance, she stayed silent. Her pride would not let her beg for answers. She had moved on and had found a way to live without him, and she would not let his return unravel the life she had fought so hard to build. Amara turned her focus back to her sons, who were now teenagers with dreams of their own. Chidi, with his studious nature, aspired to go to the university to become a doctor someday. He spent hours poring over his books, his determination to succeed, shining through in everything he did. Chike, ever adventurous, dream of becoming an engineer. He loved to tinker with machines. He often helped the villagers fix their broken radios and bicycles. The boys were everything to Amara. Her pride, her joy, her happiness, her world and her life. She had raised them to be strong, kind and ambitious, despite the hardships they had faced. She watched them now, their faces alight with youthful enthusiasm, and felt a surge of protectiveness. She would not let Dozier's return disrupt their lives. As the days passed, Dozier's presence in the village became more pronounced. He visited the homes of old friends, distributed gifts, and spoke of his success abroad. His stories were filled with the glamour of the city life, the opportunities he had seized, and the wealth he had amassed. The villagers listened in awe, their respect for him growing with each tale he told, but Amara kept her distance. She avoided places where she knew Doze would be, focusing instead on her work and her sons. She reminded herself that she had survived without him and had built a life of dignity and strength, and she would continue to do so, regardless of his presence in the village. Dozier decided to visit Amara. He stood nervously at her door, holding gifts wrapped in shining papers, his heart pounding with a mix of anxiety and hope. He had rehearsed what he would say countless times, but now, standing before the weather door of Amara's house, his resolve began to waver. Taking a deep breath, Dozier knocked. The sound echoed in the stillness of the afternoon. Moments later, the door creaked open, revealing Amara. She looked the same, yet different, stronger, more resilient. Her eyes, however, held the depth of sorrow and strength that he hadn't noticed before. When Amara saw Dozier standing there, her breath caught in her throat. For a moment, she was speechless. The sight of him bringing back a flood of memories. She quickly composed herself, her face becoming a mask of stoic calm. I am sorry, Amara, Dozier began, his voice trembling with regret. I was a coward. I left you when you needed me the most. I want to make amends. He extended the gift towards her, his hand shaking slightly. Amara looked at the gift, but did not reach for them. Her gaze returned to Dozier's face, and she saw the sincerity in his eyes. The remorse that seemed to weigh heavily on his shoulders. But years of pain and struggles could not be erased by just a few words and trinkets. You cannot undo the past, Doze, Amara replied, her voice steady and firm. I have raised our sons alone. They are strong because of me. Doze blinked, taken aback. Our sons? He replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Yes, I had twins, Amara said. The revelation hit Doze like a punch to the gut. Twins? He had abandoned not one, but two children. He felt a wave of guilt and shame wash over him. Twins? He echoed, his voice filled with disbelief. Why didn't you tell me? 
Amara's eyes flash with anger. Tell you. When? How? Does he? How, how was I supposed to tell you? Before you turned your back on me or after you turned your back on me. You made it clear that your future was more important than your responsibilities here. Dose's heart sank. He had expected anger, but the reality of her words cut deeper than he had anticipated. I was a fool, he admitted, his voice breaking. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I see now how wrong I was. I want to know them, Amara. I want to be a part of their lives now, if you would let me. Amara regarded him silently for a long moment. She had dreamt of this day. Imagined what she would say if Doze ever returned. But now that he was here, her feelings were a tumultuous mix of anger and sorrow. Chidi and Chiki are strong, good boys, not because of you, but in spite of you. Doze nodded, accepting her words. I know, he said quietly, and I will do whatever it takes to make things right. Dozier, determined to make amends, sought out to his sons, Chidi and Chiki. He asked around the village and soon found them playing football with their friends on a field at the edge of Umwaka village. The laughter and shout of the boys filled the air as they chased the ball. Their youthful energy and calm nature was evident in every move. As Dozier approached, he felt a mix of nervousness and hope. His heart pounded in his chest, each step feeling heavier than the last. When Chidi spotted him, recognition flickered in his eyes. He had seen this man before in the old photos that Amara had kept hidden away. The man who had abandoned them and their mother. Chidi stopped playing, signaling to his brother Chike, sensing the tension, came to stand beside him. His face was stern, his eyes hard with the years of unspoken questions and silent hurt. Dozier stood before them, his voice trembling as he spoke. I have come to seek your forgiveness, he said, his gaze shifting between the two young men. I know I have failed you and your mother, but I want to be part of your lives now. The weight of his words hung in the air. The other boys on the field had stopped playing and were watching the scene unfold with curiosity and confusion. Chidi and Chike exchanged a glance, their expression a mix of shock and skepticism. This was the moment they had secretly wondered about, but never truly expected it. Chidi and Chike listened to their father's plea, their hearts heavy with pain of abandonment. The memories of growing up without a father, of seeing their mother struggle and sacrifice alone, it flashed through their minds, and they had built a life without him. They had grown strong and resilient because of his absence. Chidi, the more composed of the two, spoke first. We cannot forgive you easily, he said, his voice firm but measured. You can't just come back into our lives like that. We went through so much without you. Our mother was ridiculed. Some called us fatherless, all because you chose to deny us. Chike's eyes blazed with anger. Do you know what it was like to grow up without a father? He demanded to see your mother work herself to the bone just to make sure we had food to eat and clothes to wear. You left us and now you think you can just walk back in. We do not need you in our lives. We are fine without you. Doze felt the stink of their words. Each one a reminder of his failures. I know I cannot undo the past, but I want to support you, he said. I want to try to make things right. I want to be there for you both in any way I can. Chidi's gaze softened slightly, but the heart was still evident. It's not just about money or support, he said. It's about trust. It's about knowing that you are here to stay, that you are not going to leave again when things get tough. Doze nodded, understanding the depth of their pain. I promise you, I am here to stay, and I will do whatever it takes to earn your trust, to show you both that I am committed to being a father to you. Amara, watching them from a distance, felt a pang of sorrow. She had prepared herself for this day, knowing that their sons deserved to have a father in their life, even if she could never forgive Doze herself. The sight of them confronting Doze, standing tall and proud, filled her with bittersweet sense of pride and sadness. She knew this was a step they needed to take, a journey they had to embark on for their own sake. 
As Doze stood there waiting for their responses, Chidi and Chiki exchanged another glance. The road to forgiveness would be long and fraught with challenges, but perhaps, just perhaps, there was a glimmer of hope that they would find a way forward. As time passed, Doze worked hard to end the trust of his sons. Every day was a test of his sincerity and commitment. He attended their football games, cheered them on from the sidelines, and spent evenings helping them with their studies. He shared story of his time in America, not to boast, but to connect with them, to bridge the gap that years of absence had created. Financially, Doze spared no effort. He ensured that Chidi and Chike had everything they needed for their education. New books, uniforms, and even tutor for extra lessons. Nothing was too much for his sons. But it was the emotional support that mattered the most. Doze was there to listen, to offer advice, and to simply be present. Slowly, the walls of resentment began to crumble. Chidi, the ever more studious and serious one, appreciated Doze's efforts in his academic pursuit. He began to see a different side of the man he had once despised. Chike, with the adventurous spirit, found common ground with Doze through their shared love for fixing things. Amara watched from the sides, her feelings a complex blend of relief and lingering pain. She had never stopped loving Doze, but the betrayer had cut deep. Despite her personal feelings, she recognized the positive impact his presence had on their son. She allowed Doze access to Chidi and Chike, knowing it was the best thing for the both of them. The family, though scared by the past, started to heal gradually. They moved forward, united by love and strength. He sponsored their education and, true to his words, sent Chidi and Chike abroad for their university studies. The day they left for the airport was a poignant one, filled with tears of pride and joy. Mama, I will make you proud, Chidi promised, hugging Amara tightly. Take care of each other, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. And remember, I am always here for you. Doze stood a little apart, giving them their moment. But his heart swelled with gratitude. He had been given a second chance to be a father, and he intended to make the most of it. With Chike and Chidi settled in their new lives abroad, Doze turned his attention to Amara. He knew he could never fully erase the pain he had caused, but he wanted to make her life easier. He moved Amara to the city, to a comfortable house where she would want for nothing. He opened a large grocery store for her, providing her with a sense of independence and achievement. Amara's store quickly became a success. She poured her energy into it, finding solace in the work. The villagers, who once pitied her, now looked at her with admiration. She had not only survived, but thrived, turning adversity into strength. One evening, as the sun set over the city, Doze and Amara sat on the balcony of their home. The air was filled with scent of blooming flowers and gentle breeze rustling the leaves. I never thought would be here, Doze said quietly, breaking the comfortable silence. Amara looked at him, her eyes reflecting the years of struggle and resilience. We are not the same people we were, she replied. We have both changed. Do you think there is a chance for us to be something new? Doze asked, his voice filled with hope and humility. Amara gazed at him softly. Perhaps, she said. Doze nodded, accepting her words. He leaned in and they shared a deep kiss. It was the beginning of another love story for them. The story of Doze and Amara teaches an important lesson about responsibility, resilience and forgiveness and the importance of family. Doze's abandonment of Amara and their unborn children for personal gain shows the consequences of avoiding one's responsibilities. Amara's strength and determination in raising her twin sons alone highlights the power of resilience and the ability to overcome adversity. Dozier's return and sincere efforts to make amends demonstrates the importance of seeking forgiveness and working to rebuild trust. Ultimately, the story underscores that family bonds, though tested by betrayal and hardship, can heal 
and grow stronger through love, patience, and commitment. Thanks for watching this captivating story on African stories and folk tales. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories. Thank you.